Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler. And in today's video, we are going to look at homeostasis and specifically how ADH, the hormone, regulates the water in the body. Now, this particular video is also for grade 11s and grade 12s. It's important to note that if you are in grade 11 now, this would be applicable to you doing the kidney. If you are in grade 12, you already know that you need to study the section homeostasis. So being in grade 11 now, it's important to grasp this really, really well because it's going to come up again in grade 12. Now, just a little bit of revision, just going over terminology before we move any further. We do need to know what homeostasis means. And homeostasis means keeping the body's internal environment within narrow limits. In other words, not too high, not too low, just right, nice, and like an equilibrium in the middle. And one way to do that is to use hormones. And this particular hormone is ADH, which is the hormone we use to regulate the amount of water water in the bloodstream. And it stands for antidiuretic hormone. And the word diuretic refers to urination. So if it's antidiuretic, it means it's going to cause you to urinate less. And its target organ is the kidney, specifically the nephrons within the kidney. Now, in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to explain how ADH regulates the water in the body on a hot day, on a cold day, on a day you've been sweating, on a day you haven't been sweating. Maybe you've drunk a lot of water, maybe not enough. Remember that in an exam, you may be asked uh, to explain how ADH does its job under a circumstance that maybe you haven't seen before. And so I'm just going to list a few of them that you can use these template answers and you can use them for any exam and they will always work. Now, let's actually get into how the nephron regulates the water in the body. And I'm just going to quickly remind you of the structures in the nephron, especially for the grade 12s watching this who haven't maybe done it in a really long time. But remember that the nephron is broken up into regions and those regions have different functions. Remember, we had this big structure at the front here called the glomerulus. We have the proximal convoluted tubule over here. We have the skinny tube over here, the loop of Henle. We have the distal convoluted tubule over here. And then finally, we have the collecting duct. If you can't remember all of this and you want to go back and refresh your memory, you can click the video up there now. It is one of the grade 11 videos going over the structures of the kidney and how they actually function. It might be quite useful, especially if you can't remember this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain to you how you need to explain how homeostasis works inside the body. And I'm going to use the example on a hot day, but I also want you to know in tests and exams, you could potentially be given a scenario of any of the following things that are maybe not just a hot day. They might say that you had excessive sweating, maybe you were exercising, maybe the person lost blood or they were dehydrated. So I want you to know that any one of these other scenarios, you can use this same answer and you must, must follow this template in order to get full marks when you're explaining the role of ADH and how it regulates water in the blood. Now, with all homeostatic functions, we need someone to stimulate a response. So we always start off our story, our explanation with the stimulus that is triggering this. And the stimulus on a hot day is going to be a change in the amount of salt or solutes in the blood. And so if it's a really hot day and you've been sweating, we are going to see an increase in osmolarity. Now, I know it's a really big word, but it's actually simple if you break it down. Osmo means water. Lar molarity refers to solutes or how much salt is dissolved within a liquid. And so basically it's saying the blood is really salty. You've lost a lot of water. Now, that message needs to be sent to someone to do something about it. And that is where the hypothalamus comes into play. And the hypothalamus, you may have heard of it before, is a region of the brain which is uh, responsible for maintaining homeostasis along with a few other things as well. Now, the hypothalamus is not working on its own. It is uh, a region of the brain and linked to the glands of the body. 
it, it can't secrete the hormone that we're looking for. So what the hypothalamus does is it registers that there is too much salt in the blood and it sends a message to the master gland, the pituitary gland. Now, the pituitary gland is responsible for secreting a number of hormones, which is also why we call it the master gland. Now, what hormone is going to come out of the pituitary gland itself is the hormone ADH. Specifically, we are going to secrete more of this hormone. So that's really important. We're making more ADH. Remember, it's antidiuretic hormone. So in other words, urinate less hormone. Why do you want to urinate less? So that you hold on to more water in the bloodstream. Now, this particular hormone needs to be sent to an effector or a region or an organ or a muscle so that we can get this going. We can actually store the water and reclaim it. And so, the ADH is sent to your distal and your collecting duct in your kidney. And I will remind you alongside here on the nephron that that means this whole section over here, that's the collecting duct, along with this section over here, the distal convoluted tube, what happens is that whole area becomes more permeable. And so if we continue our explanation, we need to say that the distal and the collecting duct is the effector. They are the ones that are going to be affected. And it makes the tubules more permeable. And what that means is they are more permeable to water. And we want them to be more permeable to water because we want to absorb more water. Or in other words, we want to reabsorb more water back into the bloodstream. And so the outcome of this is more water is reabsorbed. That means that more water is put back into the bloodstream. And if we look alongside again of the nephron, you can see wrapping around, particularly the distal convoluted tubule, you can see this capillary all the way around here, which is great for reabsorption. It means the water can go straight back into the bloodstream. And the product of this, the final thing, is that a small concentrated amount of urine is produced. Now, it's important to also always finish your answer off. I'm going to squeeze it up here that you are going to return to the norm. What does that mean, the norm? The norm basically means the normal levels of water in the bloodstream. So you must always, always, always round your answer off with that. Now let's look at the opposite, right? So we've looked at a hot day, but now we need to look at a cold day. And we're also going to introduce a couple of other alternatives. It might say in the question that you were inactive that day. Maybe you were resting. Maybe that particular person in the question um, drank a lot of liquids. So now we have the opposite problem. Instead of having uh, too little water, we now have too much water. And we need to get rid of that excess water. Now, the answer is going to be basically the same or very, very similar as to what I've just explained. There's just some key differences I'm, I'm going to highlight for you so that you know. But what's really nice about studying this section is if you just learn the one, the other, the alternate answer is just the opposite. So if it increases in the one, it decreases in the other. If it secretes more in the one, it secretes less in the other. And you'll see now as I run through it, I am going to highlight the ones that you can just simply swap and, and substitute in saving you time while you study. So again, with this kind of thing, we always start our explanation with the stimulus. This time, however, what we have is a decrease in osmolarity. Now, previously, we had an increase in osmolarity. Now we're having a decrease. It means our blood is getting more watery. That is still sent to the hypothalamus, that information. So that's the same. It doesn't change. And that hypothalamus is going to say the water is uh, too high in the blood, our blood is too watery, and it sends the message still yet again to the pituitary gland because the pituitary gland is responsible for secreting ADH. 
This time, however, we are going to secrete less ADH, okay? So these are the two differences as it stands. Let me just quickly highlight them for you. So we have a decrease in osmolarity. That's different. And we are secreting less ADH. That message is still sent to the same place as it was before, the distal convoluted tubule and the collecting duct. So it's still sent there. But now the effect is different. Instead of making them more permeable, it makes them less permeable. And remember, permeable means uh, allows for substances to move through the membrane, meaning we don't want the water to go back into the blood. We actually want it to stay in the nephron. And so we're going to highlight that as a different color. So they are less permeable. So ADH makes it less permeable. And because the nephron is now less permeable, it means that, again, less water is reabsorbed. Again, this is also different. It's less water is reabsorbed. Therefore, a large amount of urine, which is dilute, is produced. And again, we always need to end off our answers saying that we return to norm, with the norm, of course, being the correct levels. So let's just quickly also highlight the differences here. So we've got a large amount of dilute urine. So as you can see, the answer is very, very similar to the previous one. So don't waste your time learning both perfectly off by heart. Just learn the one and know that certain words like decrease, increase, um, less and more and dilute and concentrated are just interchangeable depending on the example that you're working with. Now, as always, I like to finish off my lessons with a terminology recap. You can use all of these words for flashcards, mind mapping, and they are words you should focus in on, especially because you need to use them correctly to explain yourself. Now, first of all, we're going to start off looking at osmolarity. Osmolarity is the way in which we measure how much water and salt or solutes is in the blood. And so when we say things like osmolarity is increasing, it means that there is more salts in the blood, less water. If we say it's decreasing, then that means that there is more water and less salt in the bloodstream, and we need to regulate that. Now, the hypothalamus is the region of the brain which is responsible for regulating the osmolarity of the blood. In other words, how watery or how salty the blood is. Now, the hypothalamus is the receptor and it sends information to the pituitary gland, which is the gland that stimulates hormones to be produced. In particular, the hormone ADH, which is our antidiuretic hormone. It's the hormone that stops you from urinating. Now, it's important to note that you never stop making ADH. You either make more of it or you make less of it, but you never make like 0%. There's always a little bit in your bloodstream depending on the type of day your body has had. Now, the ADH is sent to an effector or a region of the body that it must act upon, which is the distal convoluted tubule and the collecting duct. And we find those two things in the nephron. And the ADH makes them more or less permeable. So if there is more ADH, they are going to be more permeable. In other words, you want the water to leave the distal and the collecting duct, and you want it to go back into the blood. Um, if you want them to be less permeable, it means you want more water to remain in the collecting duct and therefore make more urine. Now, if any of this was quite challenging, I suggest you go back and look at my grade 11 kidney videos, especially for the grade 12s who are re-watching this and having to learn it all over again. They are really, really useful. You can find them in the grade 11 playlist. If you do like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure your notifications are turned on because I post every Tuesday and Thursday. I'll see you all again soon. Bye.